Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off-Grid Van Life where we look at lithium-ion phosphate batteries, van conversions, off-grid power, basically everything that you need to hit the road, find that adventure and have an awesome time. In this video, I'm going to be looking at these. In this box is a set of 200 amp hour Lito Carla lithium-ion phosphate battery cells. These were some of the cheaper cells that I could find on AliExpress. I was looking for interesting things, interesting uh, stuff to review. So <clears throat> I, uh, just a disclaimer, I bought these with my own money. No, uh, this isn't sponsored. This isn't uh, them asking me for a review or anything like that. So you're gonna get the total honest uh, review. I'm always on the lookout for stuff that I can rec recommend to you guys. Uh, interesting things, really cost-effective way of doing things. Obviously, we know most of the big lithium-ion phosphate battery uh, manufacturers are reliable. The likes of Eve, Lyshen, Catel, um, Winston, those guys make great battery cells. Uh, but there's not a lot known about some of the smaller brands and there's also a lot of junk out there as well. I mean, uh, we've tested out battery cells on this channel where we've looked at like the 420 amp hour battery cells that were advertised on AliExpress and various other options. Um, and so we're always on the lookout for stuff to test and interesting things, stuff we can recommend. So uh, this is not a recommendation to go and buy these cells right now. Uh, this is going to be a series of videos. In this first video, I'm going to be looking at the cells. What do they look like? My first impressions, basically unboxing this package. It's completely sealed. I haven't opened it yet. Um, and then I'm going to just talk through my first impressions of it. Then we're going to do a series of videos around these battery cells where I'm going to charge them up. I'm going to be doing capacity testing and then I'm going to build out the DIY battery that I was talking about. Uh, so we're going to start off by just, oh, actually, before we start off opening them, um, these cells were around $300 uh, for all four cells. Um, I paid £245 shipped to the UK, uh, which is in my opinion, some of the best value cells that I've seen, and that's for 200 amp hour cells. We're gonna have a look at this and just see what these look like. So let's uh, crack on. Obviously, if you open a box like this with battery cells with a Stanley knife, uh, just be very careful not to cut too deep and actually <laughs> cut the top of the cells or anything. It goes for pretty much opening anything, really. So first impressions, the weight of the box is pretty much what I'd expect. Uh, these are probably the bus bars and the screws or bolts. Um, I'm just going to turn this, probably turn it that way. So one of the things that you uh, should always be wary of when you open lithium-ion phosphate battery cells is uh, that there's not, not that nothing's um, opened, that nothing's leaked out of the cells or anything like that. Uh, if you're starting to open the cells up and you're finding liquid uh, coming out of the packaging, then uh, you need to dispose of those cells. They've probably been damaged and they uh, are it's not a good idea to continue using them. <clears throat> okay, so first impressions, uh, they've padded these pretty well. They've used the sort of standard uh, strato cell foam, um, which is pretty common for this sort of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm quite impressed with how they've packaged them. Um, lots of padding, um, so they were well, well protected. When I get cells like this, I'll always just pull them out, give them a visual inspection to see how they look, make sure that there's no major dings or scratches or um, that nothing's pierced the cells or anything like that. Okay, first impressions are, uh, they look pretty good. Um, there's no major 
dents or dings or anything like that. None of the corners are, are bent in or anything. Um, so first impressions, I'm pretty happy. Um, one of the things to note with these particular cells, which is good to see, is that they have a QR code on the top, uh, which probably means that they are uh, grade A cells. Um, not always, but generally that uh, would lead you to think that they're grade A because in theory you can trace it back. Um, one of the things that's a bit concerning is that uh, some of these cells look a little bit bulged to me. So they should arrive from the factory at a nominal voltage of 3.2 or 3.3 volts, which should be around 30% state of charge. Uh, these are feeling a little bit bulged just when I uh, put them together and rock them. Um, which is not great. You don't really want to be able to see movement like that. Um, so that's uh, not a not great to see that. Um, on the whole, they're pretty standard. The sort of standard aluminium uh, battery um, case that's covered with this uh, foil. The terminals are just the standard sort of aluminium terminals that they've drilled out with an M6. Uh, thread. Uh, I don't particularly like this style of lithium ion phosphate battery terminal, mainly because this aluminium that they drill out and then tap with a thread is not strong. Uh, realistically, you're probably not going to torque these more than, I wouldn't torque them more than probably six newton meters when I put this battery together. Uh, just because that aluminium just can't take that much more. You're much better off with uh, laser welded studs. Um, they just give you better results. Those you can torque up to probably 10 Newton meters, uh, which uh, if you don't plan on having a high draw from the battery as in large amperage draw, um, then it's not too big of an issue because uh, you really notice that being able to uh, torque those down to 10 newton meters makes a big difference when you are drawing like 150 or more amps from the battery. But yeah, overall, um, not that pleased to see them rocking like that. It feels to me like these are bulged a little bit. Uh, so we'll see how they do. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, there's the information on here is better than I've seen from some of these sort of no name brand or smaller unknown uh, battery cells. So um, they give you these stickers uh, with the date, they're dated 2021 nine. So presumably uh, these were checked in uh, September. I doubt they were actually manufactured in September, uh, but yeah, that's probably when they left the factory. Would that be? Yeah, that's about when I ordered them. So probably, but yeah, the QR code is good to see. Uh, has some information on there about the company and uh, yeah, there's a few things that I'm not uh, overly pleased with. There's some sticky, dirty residue on all of the terminals. They probably had tape on there just to, uh, for safety reasons, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, on the whole, look like decent battery cells. Um, so we'll get them into a simple clamp, just plywood and uh, 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 fiber tape, and then uh, put a BMS onto the top of it and charge it up. And we'll see how they perform in the capacity test. So. Yeah, oh, just before we sign off, let's just have a look at what they've provided in, by way of uh, bus bars. Oh my goodness. Eesh. Um, gosh, I don't even know what to make of that. <laughs> that is an interesting one. So they've provided this as a bus bar, four of these. Uh, so as you can see, those are very thin. I don't even know if that's copper. I presume it's tinned copper, but can't be sure. Might just scrape some of that tin off and just see if it is. But Either way, I think that that's too thin. It depends what you're wanting to run on this, but realistically, I don't know what this would measure out as in terms of a cross section, but yeah, um, 
not that pleased with that. Um, and then they've given these sort of just standard little uh, grub screw type things, but yeah. Um, can't say I'm that pleased with these bus bars. I mean, they, to be fair, in some regard, they would be flexible, um, more flexible just than just a rigid piece of copper. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that those are ideal. With this sort of, this type of bus bar where they have the thin uh, piece of copper, or I presume this is copper, just for argument's sake, let's say that it is, it is copper. Um, you'd usually expect them to have sort of three of them um, which would then offer the flexibility that you're looking for. So when your cell, if your cells do expand and contract and move at all, uh, then you have that flexibility, but then you also have the cross section to be able to actually carry the, the load, the current that you are putting through it. So, I mean, they'll probably be fine. I might just put a 100 amp BMS onto here with these, uh, but yeah, first impressions of the bus bars are, that they are not ideal. Um, so I'll probably look at uh, a different option for bus bars. Don't think that I want to use these long term, but uh, we'll see. But yeah, anyway, uh, that's my first impressions of these Leto Kala battery cells, 200 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery cells. Uh, in the next videos on the series, I'll be building out the battery, um, top balancing the cells, putting the BMS on, and then we'll run some capacity tests. So we'll probably run a fan heater or something like that and do a high high draw, high C capacity test. And then we'll also do some low uh, draw capacity tests as well, just using smaller 10 amp capacity tests. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful in some way. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.